600 miles off the coast of South America lie a group of islands unlike any other. Nearly devoid of fresh water, they support an impressive array of wildlife. Isolated by the mighty Pacific Ocean, they played an important role in our past. These are the Galapagos Islands, and nearly two centuries ago, they were host to discoveries that changed the world. The year was 1835. After nearly three years of exploration, the British survey ship, the HMS Beagle, arrived here. Aboard the vessel was the young naturalist Charles Darwin. Throughout his five weeks in the archipelago, Darwin observed and collected the wildlife. His discoveries enabled him to propose his theory of natural selection, and in doing so, he altered the scientific community and the world. Darwin's work began a long tradition of scientific study in the Galapagos Islands. Each year, hundreds of ecologists and biologists flock here to continue his legacy. Yet, Darwin's influence has spread far beyond the islands in which it started. His work is studied in laboratories, museums, and classrooms around the world. In March of 2011, after months of studying Darwin's work, 11 students from My Evolution Plus embarked on a journey to the Galapagos Islands. We were on a quest to observe Darwin's famed wildlife and see evolution in action. After a long day of initial travel, we began our adventure on San Cristobal. Our exploration began with two days of snorkeling. We dove beneath the waves and encountered creatures we'd never seen before. Later, we climbed into the highlands to help restore the island's ailing environment. We're going to the highlands of San Cristobal, specifically to the Patun Sacha Research and Conservation Station. It was not too challenging, but it did open our eyes to the state of the islands. This new knowledge would manifest itself at our next destination. We arrived in Floriana to see the famed giant tortoises. On an island of 120 people, humans once outnumbered their endangered neighbors. Thanks to restoration efforts, however, numbers have risen once again. After a day spent among these giants, we moved on to Isabella, the largest island in the archipelago. Here we thought we'd see and do more of the same. We'd study nature and supplement what we were taught in the classroom. Yet, even as we sought to understand it, nature would thrust us into a new and confusing situation. On March 11th, Japan was struck by a 9.0 earthquake that sent tsunamis across the Pacific Ocean. As the world learned of tragic events occurring at the epicenter, we were left in the dark. So the looting begins. Yeah. This is the most amazing. Seriously? Yeah, because it's a kind of emergency, the bus driver told some people to Sierra Negra Volcano. Now he's coming and he's going to take us to the Can we leave some of our stuff here? Or should we? Yep. Okay, cool. I'd be safe. I'd be safe and warm if I was in LA. If I was in LA. What we just got, um, that, at least from this guy, he was not sure that they're going to allow people to go back even in the evening to town. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out. I'm about to cry. Shut up! If I mean official uh, press bulletin or announcement. Pre announcement, thank you, from the government uh, at 8 o'clock that no one should go down before then. Okay, so the governor from Galapagos and president <coughs> decided uh, that we can go back to the village. Carpas. Yes. <laughs> Okay, mañana te 
mueras, vives, vive la vida hoy, vive la, aunque mañana te mueras, vives, vive la vida hoy, vive la, aunque mañana te mueras, vives, vive la vida hoy, vive la, ella me hizo ver. Our travels brought us into contact with the exotic and unfamiliar, the strange and extraordinary. We restored weakened natural habitats and witnessed nature's awesome power. We climbed mountains and descended into the sea. All the while we witnessed the incredible world that Darwin's evolution had wrought.